Welcome to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show, where we talk about food, fashion, finance, and foundations of life. We are live on KCAA Broadcasting Network, 1050 AM, following broadcast in 102.3 FM and 106.5 FM. We are serving the world one household at a time. KCAA is affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and NBC Sports. We are sponsored by Sheltered Studios, Fire Connect, and Kimiator Peak Performance Coaching. And we are back. This is Liam Watkins, your host, Fabulous Lifestyle Radio food segment. And our next guest is Luis Valencia. He is the restaurant owner of La Careta, and it's an authentic Mexican food restaurant. Um, I brought him, I'm going to bring him on today. Uh, we're going to talk about what it's like to, to start a restaurant, especially here in, in San Diego. Um, it, his business has been in, in the family for since 1980, so it's been quite a while, and they uh, have authentic, incredible food. So, Luis, are you on the phone? Luis. Hello. Hey, Luis. Hey, Liam. How are you doing? Good, good. Good, man. I was just telling the audience uh, that you've, you've been in this business or your family's been in this business since 1980. Is that correct? Correct. It's been in 1980, uh, back in the town called Alpine in East San Diego. Wow. Alpine. That's that's a little town. Yes, it is. And, and uh, so let me ask you this question, Luis, is that uh, – uh, Liam was uh, concerned about uh, how much time you're going to be able to be on the uh, air with us because I understand that there's a shortage of cooks in your location. There's a shortage of cooks, dishwashers, hostesses, and servers and bartenders. Yeah, yeah. I know I know. it's not only impacting you, it's impacting a lot of restaurant so, owners. Not, yeah, not only am I just cooking, I'm also helping the front of the house, running food, Cleaning tables, washing dishes, and bartending. So, so if you have to run away in order to do one of those tasks, don't worry about it. We'll 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 carry on. So, uh, Leanne, no, that's why I have my sidekick here, my wife Casey. Oh, okay, great. Help. She can jump in. We'd rather talk to Casey anyway. So, <laughs> hey, right. Well, my understanding, uh, Luis, is that Casey has been. Really, really an incredible support system for you in not only in this time, but also in the the creation of, of your restaurant. Correct. Thanks to her uh, believing in in my my goal, my dream. She saw it all when I used to work at be at the family business and being able to move to Temecula, where we wanted to raise our kids in a good school uh, district and good uh, community. I was commuting to Alpine. For almost two years, and uh, it was kind of wearing me down. And I told her I need to find a new job out here or do something. And what'd she say? Babe, you already know how to run the whole restaurant. You can have this restaurant here in Temecula to to be able to continue your dad's legacy. And also, nobody has the type of food your dad started back in 1980, and you guys are still have the same quality and efficiency that you create on a daily basis. Now, you accidentally ran into your uh, your store, right, uh, the restaurant. Uh, you were just driving around, and all of a sudden you saw a sign, right? Correct. So that same week, uh, I, was, uh, I, was, uh, I was debating of, after I talked to my wife and everything, I said, should I, what, what, sh- what should I do? And, of course, a sign from God, I believe, and her support got me to see this location, a big sign saying restaurant available right when I was heading to Costco. And that's, and the rest is history. We're here almost three years in November and through all the ups and downs we've been through, trying to get it open and and then COVID is one of the, probably the worst for anybody in, in, in the world to go through. Were you able to take advantage of any of the programs with COVID? Uh, I I tried many of them from the state, and the only ones that I got was a PPE loan. Hmm. So how how, uh, did, how, oh. how how were you able to pivot? So was, was it mainly like through DoorDash 
take out stuff like that? Because I know for, for months, uh, there's there's no dine-in seating. Yeah, so to put, put this in perspective, you, you open the restaurant for 15 months, you're growing your clientele, after being delayed almost six months to get it open and having to pay rent and this and that on the side, and your money just going away and not being able to open, and the city just delaying me with the fire, this, the, the building, the health, and finally, you know, it's, it was, this place was already a restaurant for, I mean, I'm like the sixth, seventh restaurant in this location. And uh, and I've always been passionate about, you know, what my dad taught me as a young boy and my work ethic. And I always believed in his product. And thanks to my wife, I was able to expand and, and start our own to continue my dad's legacy. And that's where it led to, uh, you know, being so tight on everything from the beginning and to be able to, uh, how do you say that word, hitting that, that rock bottom of uh COVID where they said two weeks only and then it extended almost to three months to just doing takeout was like one of the worst when your sales dropped almost 90%. You have to lay off all your workers, everybody and and how do you survive? You know, it's like, but thanks to our faith and and our her support with me, we me and her would work with our kids at the restaurant. You know, as a five-year-old, seven-year-old being there at the restaurant since COVID, especially during that time, you know, not like I could put them to wash dishes yet or nothing, but but they they wanted to help. But wow. yeah, takeout was not our thing because we're a sit-down restaurant with a full bar, you know, margaritas. You come in there, you have a nice social environment, ambiance, and the takeout for us was, especially with everybody being scared, everybody was doing takeout only, like yeah. drive through, and then so we started DoorDash, not DoorDash, we started Grubhub. And it started to do curbside, and you know it helped a little bit, but just yeah. But even that, they flow. take they take X percentage of of your profits, and it's what Correct. is it, thirty percent? After, yeah, after after like you know, after realizing after a couple months of doing it, I had to stop it for a little bit because they're they're taking so much money, and it's like wow, this is like even worse. Like it's only me and her working, and we're barely even making it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And and also, you know, what, what people don't really understand is, and, and I, I'm a business owner, I, I can't imagine what it's like to have a, a, a storefront. Um, but all of the different things that, especially in the food realm, that you need to take care of with city, with state, with the health departments, food manager certificates, um, you know, having the city come out, check water temperature and pH and all the different things. And to have... Oh, you name it. <laughs> and the list goes on and on yeah. and on. And then boom, you get that, that, okay, you're ready to go. And then like you were saying, uh, launching and then, and then building clientele and then for everything to just you know, go down. So, yes. so I'm thankful that what I'm thankful for is that all our regular customers that kept us afloat that I'm not going to lie, they came at least, they did at least three to four day, uh, three to four day, uh, times a week to take, to just take out anything just to keep us afloat. Yeah, and uh, thanks to them, you know, and uh, and to my wife hanging in there, and myself, you know. But the one positive thing about the whole thing, I can say, I didn't have to worry about traffic. That was one. <laughs> yeah. Two, I I was able to hang out with my kids more because the first 15 months of working, 7 a.m. to 12 midnight almost, I barely saw my family, hmm. and I was. And I, and I was losing track of all that because I was so focused on this business and it was really hard until I realized with COVID, it was like, wow, there's more of the life than just working every day, you know, the family time. So that, that, that I took into consideration that, you know what, this is a blessing to be able to get back into my family, you know, like being able to spend more time with them on the, on the non-busy moment. And then when we got busy, then we went back to work and did our thing, but yeah, but um, you know, the two the two good things about COVID for me was those two things: no traffic and the uh, being able to be with my family more. Okay, now, Luis, I'm going to just tell you that you said your kids are too young. Didn't you interview somebody uh, in your last show, Liam? Yeah, yes, but like we were saying, the regulations you can't have, you can't you can't have kids working. Yeah, but uh, these these are his relatives. Liam actually interviewed an 11 year old kid who's starting his own restaurant. Can you believe that? 
Yeah, really? see, Casey, there you go. So you need to teach your kids all about washing dishes and all that. It's never too early. True, very true. Yeah. And and so they're they're op- they're opening up. Uh, have you heard of ghost kitchens? Ghost kitchens? No. It's pretty much a, a space uh, with with shared. Uh, Is it like pop up. Or, uh, it's pr- it's pretty much uh, it's a it's a massive kitchen, but with different stations um, and companies that don't want a storefront go in and kind of like a commercial kitchen, but multiple commercial kitchens uh, and then shared freezer space. And then pretty much they just operate with a uh, Grubhub uh, or Uber Eats. Oh, stuff yes, like that. I get it. Yeah. So I he, I've heard that. He's oh, going to be doing I don't that. know if it was Grubhub or one of those companies was telling me if I wanted to enter something like that and share my kitchen. Right, but right. like I said, like my goal here is not, you know, it's always been to, you know, give the best quality food that my dad, you know, see my dad's legacy with all his food that he started back in 1980, homemade enchilada sauce, homemade rellenos, homemade chile verde, pozole, you name it, we got it. Yeah. Okay. So quickly, I wanna I wanna talk about your food. Explain to the audience what sets your your family's recipes apart from because there's so many different uh mexican foods uh, since we're in southern california and restaurants um what sets yours apart what sets us apart is just the the actual ingredients mm. the, that we use for each each uh for instance our chile verde we infuse our ingredients with the meat not make the sauce on the side and then do the meat on the side. We do we infuse it together. Mm. Same with the mole and same with the chili corral. Mm. And then our no, and then we have our salsa uh, verde, the very really popular one. It's serranos, tomatillos, cilantro, cebolla, and uh, a little bit of habanero. Give mm. it that little bite, but it has the best taste ever. Mm. And I've I've heard about your uh, your famous chicken tortilla soup. Oh yeah. Can't go wrong with that one. <laughs> so our, our chicken tortilla soup is minute to order. So so you get everything, like the, the crispy tortilla chips, on, cilantro, green onion, sour cream, sliced avocado, and Monterey Jack cheese sprinkled over it. And you get the broth, or homemade broth, on the side. So you pour as much as you want. Oh, so you don't mix it all then? No. Oh, you that's excellent. Customer, uh, do the pepper do the make sure of the of the broth is to accommodate their their need of they want it soggier crispier less you know and trust me they come back for more it sounds like it well hey Luis it's uh it's been great interviewing you I know you need to get back into the kitchen and take care of your clients customers and uh, tell Casey uh, thank you for letting uh, us uh, be able to interview you Uh so, uh, well, you don't, you don't have any questions for Casey? Uh, We're going to have a lot of questions case. for Casey the next time that we interview because you, you're going to be a regular here, so don't worry about it. Oh, awesome. And, uh, awesome. Yeah, we're excited to have Casey on as well, but uh, uh, we're, we've run out of time, believe it or yeah, not. He's definitely a likable guy, so I get it. <laughs> okay, well, you're. Uh, you're phenomenal. I was going to say you must be the secret uh, ingredient to the restaurant, but I can't say stuff like that nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say one thing to the audience, and you know, and everybody listening, and hopefully uh, some of our regulars are listening. I just want to say thank you to them, to my wife, to my staff that I kept are still there with me, hasn't given up on me, still believe in me to get through this even though we're under understaffed and uh and god bless everyone and and thank you thank you for this Luis. opportunity thank you guys thank you so much have a great day we are live on kcaa broadcasting network 10:50 a.m following broadcast in 102.3 fm and 106.5 fm we are serving over 5 million households in the inland empire north county san diego orange county and san gabriel valley we are serving the world one household at a time. We are also in iHeart, Spotify, Tiki Live, Ustream, Apple, iTunes, and anywhere with your favorite podcast. KCAA is affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and NBC Sports. We are sponsored by Sheltered Studios, Fire Up Connect, and Kim Yater Pick Performance Coaching.